We've got Stanford School of Business lecturer uh, Dave Dotson. I would have prayed for a, a professor like him when I was going through this rigor morale. So one of the things that's interesting here is that um, the money obviously is coming in. No matter what side you're talking about, it can, it can drive each base. I get that. But what's interesting about it, too, is that the, the, the president is also benefiting in battleground states, not in national, but in battleground states, from that improving economy. Um, now that could be short lived polls are fickle, uh, but what do you think of that? Going into this election, we could find something very different, which is that money doesn't matter like it used to be, and it really becomes an issue of data. And if I could just comment on something Chris said, is that the president's got a two and a half year head start, because he's known for two and a half years that he needs to find the 50 year old woman in Wisconsin right. and find out what's going on in her head. Whereas Elizabeth Warren's got to worry about South Carolina, which won't matter. So he's going to be collecting all all of this data, which is not expensive to collect, but it's going to be a treasure trove going into the 2020 election. In terms of the earnings in the economy, I think what matters is what is the 27 year old in Michigan? What, what are they thinking? And I think they're going to ask two questions. How am I doing? And does this person care about me? And in 2016, they said, I'm not doing very well. And this guy, Donald Trump, who, by the way, is a real estate mogul who flies around with gold plated bathrooms. He cares about me. He gets me. And so they voted for him. They're going to ask those two questions. They're not going to care about what the you stock market right is doing. It wasn't the, we look at these national polls, which were borne out accurately uh, the last time. We right. forget that Hillary Clinton was favored right. to win by a couple of points. She won popular vote by a couple of points. But we missed the fact that it's a state by state contest in a state by state contest. The, the, the president uh, stands pretty good, right? Given that he, the economy's doing well, he should be crushing it in those states. The states that matter, the six states that really matter, it's kind of a flip of a coin, but what we don't know is, one, we don't know, A, who he's running against. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit like shadow boxing right now, right? And the Let's second, say it's Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren. Well, I think it comes down to, you, you know, people discount Elizabeth Warren and they say, because I, her economic policies are kooky, okay? But what doesn't matter is what I think. What matters is what the welder thinks in Wisconsin or some state. By like, the way, we have a calamity going on. All bets are off, right? I mean, the meltdown certainly greased the skids for Barack Obama, taking nothing away from him. That's right. But if we didn't have that meltdown, it might have been a much more competitive race. That's right. And so, the, but the second piece of it is whether China is going to buy all those agricultural goods because those you purchases your doubts. Huh? I do have my doubts. I don't know why I don't always trust the Chinese. I can't tell you why. Yeah. But those agricultural purchases are going to be between June and August of next year. And if they come through, he's going to win Iowa. That's right. If yeah. they don't, I think he's going to have a hard time in Iowa. And what do you, you know, I'm also curious about Texas because everybody's talking about Texas being a swing state. There's a lot of agriculture in Texas. Interesting study they did on the, the virtues of a four day work week. Hmm. Microsoft and Japan experimenting, saying it, it, it increased productivity 40 percent. Apparently they took fewer sick days um, and, and were much more careful about the time they took off, period. What do you think of that? Well, when I used to run a company, we went to four day work days and it was shift work. So it was 24 hours a day. People loved it. The problem, I think, Melanie, that people are going to have is if IBM is on Monday through Thursday and Microsoft mm. is on, yeah, that's a great you, point. Know, you know, what happens on Friday? So the problem is we all sort of need to line up from a work day. And also, I got to tell you, I'm a little skeptical on how they come up with an even 40 percent increase I, I in productivity. I mean, you know, I, I deal with a lot of data, and you can pretty much make the data these days anything you want. So right. I'm skeptical. Especially if you were doing, let's say, squat nothing, and then you're doing 40% <laughs> more than nothing. I, it, it's always well, a look, if, you were, if you were the CEO of Microsoft and you had a 40% improvement in productivity, the next day you would be doing that globally. <laughs> That's well, right. there is that. There yeah. is that. All right, by now, you know uh, McDonald's has fired its CEO, uh, Steve Easterbrook. Um, uh, this, of course, uh, only a few hours before uh, jettisoning its chief people officer. I'm not sure uh, what a people officer is. Dave Dotson, a Stanford University fame. Um, but anyway, he's out. And um, I'm wondering if it has it's a one two. This was company policy. It was violated. He should have known about it. Um, Ferris should have known about it. Boom.
what's going on? We have to recognize that people fall in love with each other in the workplace, and sometimes they report to each other. Obviously, he had to be fired because that was the policy, and the adherence to the policy only gets stricter as you go up. The problem is, is even that, if it's mutual and, and all of that. Well, that's the problem. Okay, okay. That, that's the problem. Is is I've seen in other companies where they say if it happens and love happens, okay, report it to whoever your superior is. In this case, it'd be the board, and you sort it out. Okay. Instead, the, Easterbrook was presented with this problem, which is either I'm in love or I'm fired, in which case you keep it quiet. Now, with the chief people officer, and I get a kick out of all of the things that you can put behind the word chief these days, but with the chief people officer, my guess is that that person was in somehow that chain of command and probably knew what was going on. You know, it's weird, though, when I look at these type of instances that they... There, it's still a germane subject, isn't it? It's still happening. It's still going on. These incidents pop up even in the face of, of all this international attention and, not, and in our case, national concentration on these type of issues. Yeah, well, it's as old as the Bible, right? And, and isn't, that, isn't that the problem is that when you have a policy that says you can't behave in a way that is just how people behave. I mean, mm. people are fall in love and they like each other and so forth. And you say, we don't have a policy that facilitates that. And it's just, you're out of here. That's not realistic. Is that a wise corporate policy? No. It I can mean, be abused, right? I mean, I mean, the best policy that I ever saw was the woman who ran HP for years. And she explained the policy there, which is that things happen. You report it up. We, re, we adjust the organization and we move forward and we wish you well. And, and, and that's the only policy that's realistic, I think. And the idea that a subordinate and their superior can't have a relationship without violating the power structure, I mean, that's going to be tough, right? Because sometimes people fall in love with their boss and vice versa. We always look at polls, and that's important because, well, Fox News, we have a lot of polls. But there's another interesting one that just shows social media hits. In other words, something or anything the president says that generates 46 million social media interactions a week. Now, compared to Joe Biden, who, who, who gets two billion. Now, social media is beyond my comprehension. I'm told that people say awful things about me online, so I prefer not to investigate that. And he's so good at it. And he, exactly, I mean, he right. wants to follow Joe Biden. Really, you know, you know when we killed the um, leader of ISIS. Trump got up there and said, he died like a dog. OK, well, that's fun to read. OK, you know, Joe Biden would say on da 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 da, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and so, you know, Trump is entertaining. And Newt Gingrich said when he was trying to become Speaker of the House, which he eventually did, is he said, I want to be in the news every single day. When everyone says Trump wants to be in the news every single second of the day, mm -hmm. but it works, right? If Boeing has a jet that is not working, they pull it off the market, fix it, and put it back on the market. You know, Facebook has a product that is not working, and we know that from the 2016 election. And if Dorsey said, I'm going to pull political ads off, and maybe he did, and never put them on again, that makes no sense at all. But if they say, look, this is not working, we're going to pull it off the market, we're going to fix it, and we'll reintroduce it once it's fixed, that's what companies do all along. How do you solve the misinformation thing? Because in democracy, when voters go to the voting booth, they have to have some resemblance of truth. And so that's the part that I think isn't solved yet.